Dear Chairman, dear Mr. Mamado, first of all, many, many thanks for inviting me to take part in this great gathering and to, for the opportunity to address this distinguished audience. Uh, the topic we are talking about today is of uh, special importance, I would say, for the regions we have mentioned here. And I regret very much that I missed uh, just uh, a month ago, about a about month ago, uh, the previous gathering in Tbilisi. But I would like to somehow compensate my absence there. Um, so, Many thanks, and uh, I would start with presenting uh, or touching upon two topics. First is the Georgian view on this new initiative, uh, the Silk Road Economic Belt, and the uh, second one is uh, the, some reflections on some geopolitical uh, novelties, I would say, problems just occurred, uh, and we have to take. Take, to take it into account. But I would like to start uh, from the obvious. The formats of regional cooperation are important building blocks of the construction of the world order entirely. Therefore, the topic of our today's conversation is actually about structuring or restructuring of the fast part of the world. The in Eurasia, this is the Black Sea Caspian area, very wide area, uh, neighboring in the West with the European economic uh, space, in the East with uh, the economic giant China, and having very strong support from the South with our Turkish neighbors, and uh, also very important, but uh, still problematic in the northern direction. So what we are talking about is important from very, 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 I uh, would say, uh, dimensions. Now, let me uh, shortly uh, define how Georgia views that part of the world we call today region. Uh, and what we have... Uh, been doing in the past and what we are going to, to, to achieve in the in, in near future. First of all, we are talking about the South Caucasus because this is our, our, our homeland. Uh, it's located uh, on the strategic crossroads of the East where the North-South with the, the access to important energy sources in the South and in the, in the East, I mean the Caspian region. Of course, Black Sea and Caspian Sea form very important pillars for our regional vision. Another very important component of the geo this geopolitical uh, structure is the Central Asia. Due to its geographic location, uh, Central Asia has historic ties and common interests with many important actors. Being the largest landlocked region in the world with vast natural resources and really enormous potential, enormous potential, it needs a multiple access to the world markets. Among them, one of the directions of such a link is via the South Caucasus. It's clear, and when our Chinese colleagues are talking about multiple variations of these Silk Road Bell, definitely we all are keen to propose our version as a one of the one of the versions, and to talk about the advantages uh, we can offer to our to our partners. All this, uh, what I have just uh, said above, naturally interconnect the interests and problems of the given regions, the promotions of the former, and the solution of the later cannot be achieved without looking upon these regions as one strategic space. And this is a very important approach uh, with Belisi, in Tbilisi are trying to, to, to exploit. The principle of indivisibility of security, this is important. In no other part of the world seems to be more relevant than here because everything is interconnected. Every step made in every country uh, will be immediately reflected uh, in, the, in the processes in the neighborhoods. 
So this is a very important uh, prerequisite to be taken into account. Uh, it should be mentioned that several initiatives aimed at diversifying the links uh, of the post-Soviet Central Asian states to Europe were proposed back in 1990s. We all know it, I suppose, some of them being already mentioned here, uh, as East-West Energy Corridor, which is very important, Traseca as a link, which is already functional, not maybe functional in, in its full capacity, but nevertheless, it exists, and there are many, many things to be done. Uh, it was uh, originally initiated by the EU as a humanitarian corridor, evolving uh, into a broader concept of the restoration of the Great Seal Road. And we see the new initiative of our Chinese colleagues as a, I would say, a following step, which is very important, development of those steps already made uh, those times. The mechanisms and tools of cooperation uh, are conducive to the establishment of the regional framework uh, and those allows the generation not only of so much needed power uh, of synergy, but at the same time they represent regional instruments aimed at diminishing risks and strengthening stability. And there are many, many cases when this uh, premise was really realized. As an illustration, uh, I would uh, shortly uh, touch upon the case of Turkey-Azerbaijan-Georgian cooperation. Uh, I can, I would say, uh, proudly state that this trilateral cooperation format has gained vital importance for Georgia from the first day of its independence. It can be said that after the Cold War, in the course of very uneasy, contradictory process of so-called post-Soviet transformation, this triangle of contacts and cooperation served as an exemplary exception, unfortunately quite rare, but nevertheless. It covered almost all aspects of interstate relations, economics, security, cultural relations, and constituted one of the core elements of regional stability. And if we have peace and tranquility, not well-structured regional situation, but at least uh, conflicts frozen and uh, more or less stable situation is due to this cooperation also. Uh, one of the vivid examples of uh, effectiveness of this trilateral cooperation was the concept of the Transcaucasian East-West Corridor. All three countries uh, participated in construction of it in all three elements of this, of this corridor. First one was the energy corridor, Bakut Bilisi Jehan, South Caucasus pipeline, TANAP of today, and the f uh, future projects represent the excellent examples highlighting this, uh, this very premise. Then the transportation corridor the Traseca started here, and it was good. It was very important uh, development which paved way for the further development, and I think uh, the very fact that we are here gathered in Baku and talking about the participation of the South Caucasian states in this huge pro program of uh, Silk Road uh, Belt uh, is based on, on that, that experience. Today we have uh, another set of, set of projects. First of all, this is the Karst Pilisi Baku Railway, which will uh, connect two systems of the South Caucasian and Turkish Railway, uh, and thus, uh, I would say, completed the huge, in, of enormous format railway bridge from, uh, from, from uh, Pacific to the, to the Atlantic Oceans. So this is a geopolitical phenomenon of, of enormous importance. What go, Georgia is now going to do, definitely we have our homework to do in this regard. First of all, it's uh, further development of our port facilities, including the big Anaclia deep water port, which is under consideration now. 
with close cooperation with other partners. Definitely, this is the increasing of uh, the capacity of our transportation means both railway and road transportation and development of other elements uh, needed for this for this uh, for this um, program. But not less important is the intergovernmental, interstate connections, because as our um, uh, experience shows, these are very, uh, I would say, volatile. Uh, points uh, to be, and uh, problems arise here to be addressed. Because if the um, entire effectiveness of the system is decreased, usually it's due to the problems arise uh, at this interconnection uh, points. Here definitely huge work is needed to continue and develop, uh, I would say, in a certain uh, environment conducive to the more effective use of this, of this system in very uh, facets of this, of, this, of this issue, including uh, legal framework, regulatory mechanisms, interstate technical norms, and so on and so on. And I can assure you that uh, Georgian specialist experts, uh, and definitely, first of all, the state authorities are ready to take uh, part in this very important, although not easy, not easy job. Now, let me very briefly uh, turn to the next point. Uh, this is the changing geopolitics or geopolitical changes we are witnessing now. We all know that two most important, because of dangers, uh, events raised most serious concern and chain to the special attention of the world community today. First of all, we are talking about the activation of the Islamic State in the South, unprecedented nest of terrorism and extremism. And second, the issue of concern to all who ponder the fate of the world. Yes, it's all about Ukraine, Crimea, and the role Russia is playing here. I would focus on the later, on the second one, because it is directly related with the region and the topic we are talking about. First, it should be noted that it's indispensable part of the larger phenomenon, the transformation of the post-Soviet space. Please don't make mistake. What's going on in Ukraine is not isolated conflict between two countries. This is very much uh, the part of the wider process. I would say the next act of the, of the, of the uh, scenario which started back in 2008 in Georgia. So these two developments are closely tied to each other, and the world community should see it this way. Second, the Cold War is basically over, but it comes when it comes to the properly structured form of uh, the fast space, which is still called post-Soviet, this business is still not completed. This process is still underway, and one of the bitter, I would say, uh, manifestations of this bitter reality is the problem of territorial integrity of two countries in this small, small region. Georgia's occupied territories and uh, severely damaged uh, territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and very, very acute need to actively involve every force to solve these issues peacefully because the military solution is not the uh, option. But uh, without strong will and consolidated uh, position of the world community, this uh, goal could not be achieved. Unfortunately, what happened in the past has just exacerbated of late. And 2014 was not the best, best, best year for this. I think we all have to yet uh, fully realize that after March 2014, when the upper chamber of the Russian parliament voted for in favor of military intervention in Ukraine, so that's already an year. We live in a different world. We are in great need to determine what kind of world is it? What is characteristics today? What are the rules already in place and what are the rules may appear in the future? So we have 
enormously increased uncertainty due to Ukrainian uh, events. But one thing is clear, we are not very unlikely to go back anytime soon. Definitely Russia won't step back from swallowing Crimea. And the question here is, has the spirit of Helsinki gone away? Also refers to all projects and all our economic cooperation in the future we are talking. Another question, this is, these are processes in the Black Sea, as a uh, maritime politics, policy, politics, as well as regional uh, settings. All those are at risk of, to develop into a confrontation of catastrophic scale if not dealt uh, timely and properly. And here, definitely, we should call to the international community because without their strong position here, these problems cannot be resolved. Talking about this problem here today in the region and which are already developing in the north, definitely we should think of future. How to deal with that? What can be done? Of course, another time I have to state that there is no military solution. It should be solved through dialogue. And this dialogue should be initiated by the strongest setting of international uh, community. This dialogue has a real future. Uh, uh, and I would not uh, agree with those pessimists who don't think that uh, talks, talking about the peaceful uh, tomorrow is the way uh, out of this deadlock. No, it is a way, and it should be important. It's important to, 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 to be used. And uh, concluding my, my remarks, uh, I would get back to the obvious. And again, these are important questions. What strategies have we to employ to achieve accord in this uh, situation? First, talking about the regional stakeholders, it's obvious that all of them have to be part of the process. Making any exception just makes uh, the business undone. Second, I'm sure that uh, we need, what we need is a proper balance between economic and security interests of all countries involved in the region. Therefore, it is very important to have them spelled out most explicitly. It's clear that tremendous effort and strong political will be required, but I think it's worthwhile. Obviously, compromises cannot be avoided here, but it's very important to believe strongly that uh, this should be kept in mind that every compromise should be achieved without compromising the sovereignty of any country in the region. I also believe that whatever strategy we take, the concept of the zones of influence or special interests or exclusive rights in the backyard should be left behind because this is the past and we have to move forward in the future. Thank you.